let me show you how to design that lithophane in Lithophane Maker Desktop. Um, here is the screen that you first see when you open up Lithophane Maker Desktop. This is the filament swap chromophane tool, as you can see right here. And I have a different tutorial that shows you how to use it. Um, to get to the lithophane that we're going to design today, we need to click on lithophanes up here and then go to Lightbox. The first thing you might notice when we get to this screen is the 3D model of the lithophane that you're designing over here on the left. Um, we can navigate around this 3D model with our mouse and with our keyboard. So if you just hold down the left mouse button and then move the mouse around, you can rotate the model like this. Okay, now if you hold down shift and the left mouse button down and then move the mouse around, you can translate the model. Move it left to right, up, down, do all that sort of thing. If you hold down control and the left mouse button, then you can do a different type of rotate like this. If you scroll in or scroll out with uh, the wheel on your mouse, then you can zoom in or zoom out like that. And the same thing if you hold down the right mouse button and just move the mouse around. You can also zoom in and zoom out. So that's the basics of how you navigate around in this viewer. Another way that you can adjust the view is by using this view menu here. You can click front, top, right, left, back, and bottom. And that lets you navigate around the lithophane and get good views from all the different angles. The next thing that you might want to know about is how to set default folders because this will save you a lot of time in the long run. So you go up here to file, set default folders, and then you can select whichever folders you want. When you hit OK, these folders will be the default next time that you open up the program as well. Now I'm going to open up a project that I've created. Load project, sci-fi, sci-fi.ini. The INI file is what you use to open up these projects. So it's loading in all of the pictures, putting all the settings in, and getting the whole thing ready. So all the settings are over here on the right. You can see there's a light box creator underneath that is a picture. It's a view that's been turned black and white of this back picture here. I can also look at any of these pictures simply by clicking on that picture. And if I were to click again, it would give me the option to select a different picture, but I don't want to do that. But now in this picture here, you, you see that we have this box inside of the picture. Um, this is your cropping box. So here's the lithophane surface. If I were to move this cropping box around, you can see how it affects the lithophane right there. So I'm just going to set it back up to approximately where it was. Um, below this section here, you can see the image contrast option. And you can use this to adjust the contrast of this particular image. It doesn't affect the other images. And go back over here, change this uh, image contrast really low so that it just everything becomes gray. Come to, back to this one, you'll see that this one is still really high contrast where everything is closer to black and white. Okay, I'm going to go back, set these back to where they were. Um, likewise, you can adjust the brightness, and the brightness just makes everything brighter or everything darker. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can make everything white or everything black, or some somewhere in the middle, and you know you can do things with both of these at the same time to to get the picture that you want for your lithophane. Okay, uh, you can also rotate the images. So say that. Uh, th this image needed to be rotated. I could click that button and it would rotate it. And I can rotate it back. I can rotate it around 180, 360, anything that I want. I can remove this image by clicking the X button. I can also select a new image just by clicking the image after it's already been selected up here. So if it's your main image that you're editing and you want to swap it out, you just click here and you can pick another one. You can click the X button. Um, select another one. There are a lot of different ways to handle it. And then below here we have sections of other settings. So this is the lithophane surface settings section. And you can collapse the section, you can open it back up. Um, 
but we'll keep it open so we can look at it. So we have the lithophane viewing resolution. This is the resolution of the lithophanes that are created for us to view right now while we're designing the lithophane. This lithophane viewing resolution is not used when the final lithophanes are created. The resolution that is used then is the lithophane resolution. And by the way, if you just hover your mouse over any of the names of these settings, it'll tell you what they do. So, you know, I'm going to tell you now, but you can also just do that whenever you want, right? So I'm going to make this sort of coarse just because that way the model will update faster. The lithophane surface doesn't have to be high resolution for me to be able to tell how to design it right now. So I'm not going to make it a, a very fine resolution uh, just so that my computer can do the calculations quickly. So then, yeah, the next setting is the minimum and maximum thickness. These determine how bright the brightest spots on the lithophane are. The minimum thickness, the smaller that is, the more light will get through in, in the white portions of your picture. And the maximum thickness, the thicker that is, the less light will get through in the darkest portions of your picture. I don't really ever change the settings in this area very much because, you know, they're just set by default to the filament I use. So I'm just going to shrink this section so that I can see the other sections better. The next section is the primary dimensions section. The primary dimensions are full of dimensions that have a big impact on the overall shape and size of the lithophane, right? So if I were to change the width, then the width of this guy would get different. You know, I could change it back to 150. And um, same thing with the depth. The depth is just the, uh, the thickness in, in Y. So uh, width is in X, uh, depth is in Y. And I mean, it hardly makes any difference. They're just those two dimensions that make up the plane of the table that um, the lithophane sits on. And then you have height, which is sort of a different dimension than the other two, it's, it's, it's more different than the other two. And you can see you can change it and it'll change the size of your lithophane for you. Then you have frame size. And um, in this case, frame size can be selected by the user, but it could also be impacted by some settings we're gonna look at down here so that the frame can't you know get smaller than a certain size because if it does, then the other features don't fit and it doesn't work. So um, you can set it and right now I can set it. So maybe I can make it 15. I can make it bigger. No problem. But if I go all the way down to here, then it sets it back up to a higher number because the frame simply can't get that small. If it gets any smaller, something bad is going to happen. You know, right here, it, it might be saying, oh, I'm, I'm worried that, uh, the two slots are getting too close to each other. There's not enough space here or, maybe this post here is getting too small but anyway we'll we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a second and then we have the overhang angle and the overhang angle is of course the angle of the overhangs i mean we've we've used this before in, in lots of different lithophanes so say that i change the overhang angle to 30 ish and we'll see this better if if i make the resolution finer because we can actually see all these little bits um if I, if I make it 30-ish, then, or even smaller than that, then you see this angle right here becomes easier for your printer to print. So the smaller this is, the easier it is for your printer to print up here. If you start to see like wisps or like print defects near the top, the solution is probably to adjust this overhang angle. And the overhang angle also affects the ledge on the box itself. So, you know, if I make this 90, then it's like a sheer wall right here. You have terrible overhang, you know, that's, that's not going to be easy to print. You're probably not going to have the prettiest lithophane if you try to print that. So, you know, somewhere like maybe 45, that's a pretty easy, easy thing to print. And it's not going to have a big impact on anything else because it just takes up a little bit of extra space at the top. Um, so 45 is a good number for that. So those are the primary dimensions right there. 
I think I'm going to go ahead and make the viewing resolution a little bit coarser just so that any changes are a little faster. Um, so now I have the lithophane clearance. The clearance is how much space would be on any side of the lithophane inside of these slots if the lithophane were perfectly centered. So in other words, you know, if your lithophane is 100 millimeters, then the distance from this corner to that corner would be 100 millimeters plus two times the lithophane clearance. So you have that amount of clearance on each side of the lithophane, right? So this is something that can limit the frame size. So actually, let's, let's look at that. If I were to increase this to a big number, and the frame's like, oh, I've got to be big so that we can have all this clearance, and the slots don't overlap each other. In this case, it looks like it's being limited by the slots right there to make sure that they don't overlap. Um, but you don't really need that much. I mean, a pretty snug fit would be 0.25, um, and your printer ought to be able to do that. So that's what I use. Then, then the next setting that we have is the minimum post setting. So this is the minimum post size, and what it determines is the minimum size of this post from here to here. This post is a square cross section. So from here to here, what is the minimum acceptable distance there? So for example, if I were to change this frame to be bigger, notice that the post increased in size. And the reason for that is this is just the minimum post size. The post will actually expand to be as big as it can be so that it's as strong as it can be given whatever frame size you have. But this setting tells the program that it has to be at least four millimeters from here to here, any smaller than that. And I'm just worried the post is gonna break, it, it's no bueno. So um, the minimum post size sets the minimum size of the post. Not necessarily the size of the post, but you don't really need to worry about the size of the post. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't break and I've made sure that it'll fit in here. So you don't really need any particular post size, um, which is why I just made sure that the post would be as strong as possible within the frame. And you, you have like this lower limit on its strength um, as determined by whatever minimum post size you select. All right, and then the next setting here is the box alignment clearance. The box alignment clearance sets the amount of clearance between the post and the hole up here. The smaller this number is, the snugger the fit between the top and the bottom, and that will help to eliminate any gaps that would otherwise exist here between the top and the bottom. So I like to keep it pretty snug at 0.25, that way the two of them fit together and the gaps are minimal and the, the lithophane just looks better that way. Of course, if I were to set it to zero, I would probably have problems actually fitting it together. And, and another thing you might wanna know is there is a minimum number here and in many of these other boxes, but you can actually get below it if you type it in twice. So when you're above the minimum and then you type something that's below the minimum, it'll go to that minimum number and that's just as a foolproofing kind of a thing. We don't want this number to be too small and no, nobody wants it to be too small. I don't think anybody wants it to actually be zero, but I'll let you set it to zero if you want and you can see what happens. You just have to type it twice, okay? So the next setting is the light base diameter. And I'm actually gonna change this to 101.5, but the light base diameter is just the diameter right here, this hole that exists for your light base. So you want that hole to be just a tiny bit bigger than the light base, but you probably want the two of them to rub together so that like, they kind of hold each other together. Um, but yeah, basically just take the diameter of your light base and add a little bit of cushion and then see if it fits well. So, you know, if you had a light base that was 50 millimeters in diameter, we could change this to 50 millimeters in diameter. And now you have a much smaller hole right here for your light base that will snugly hold your light base for you, right? And then we have the cable hole size, which is the distance between this point and that point, and same over here. And that is all of the sections. 
So those are all of the settings sections. We just covered them all. So now the last step is to just save out the STLs so that you can put them into your slicer and print them. Okay, so to do that, you just go to the very bottom of the tool. You can click right here to select which folder you're going to place this project into, or you can just type right here and make it whatever you want it to be. After this, once you've named it, you just click Save STL, and it'll automatically open up a folder for you that will have your STL models in it and other things that you might want in the future. So I hope this was helpful. There are also other ways that you can get help. You can come up here to this menu and click here. This will take you to the playlist that is specific to Lithophane Maker Desktop on YouTube. This will take you to the YouTube channel. And then this will take you to the Facebook users group. Here is the folder that is created for you and you can see that there are several things in it. We have a couple of color images pages. They are pages that you could print out on a printer and it would print out this picture at the right size to fit on your lithophane. Some people like to put color pictures on the back of their lithophanes to add color to their lithophanes using special paper. Um, you could find out more about that on the Facebook users group that we have for Lithophane Maker. I don't do it personally, but I have made it available to people because people have asked for it. Also, we have all of the original pictures that were used to create the lithophane light box. We have all of the STLs that are required to print the lithophane light box and we have the settings file that can be used to reopen this project and start editing it from there or use it as a template for future light boxes that you might want to make for your friends or your customers or whomever. Um, so these are all of the STLs that you need and I have already put them into the slicer. I'm not going to cover too much about how to slice these lithophanes because there's a lot out there on that, including on my own channel. If you want to search through there, you could find a lot of stuff. But you basically want as small of a layer height as you know your printer can print well. I like to use 0.12 because my printer can do that pretty well. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. I also have a brim on the bottom of these to help them stick to the bottom because this, this long length here, this will like to peel off and we don't want that. Finally, you wanna make sure that the lithophane is 100% solid. You don't want any infill in there unless the infill is 100%. Uh, you definitely don't want any hollow spots. At this layer height, all of the lithophanes will take about 17 hours and 40 minutes for my printer to print them. Now we have the structure on the box and the box's structure is actually easy to print. It's just structure. So I'm actually going to change to this printer profile and re-slice it. And I just have some Mickey Mouse ears around the corners to help it from peeling. This one will take four hours to print. So that puts us up to 21 hours and 40 minutes. And then finally, we have this piece. Again, it's just structural. It's going to take, it's estimating, an hour and 20 minutes. In total, it'll take 23 hours to print all of these. If you guys have any suggestions on how the lithophanes can be improved, please put those suggestions in the comments. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Lithophane Maker Desktop will be in a link in the description if you're interested in buying it. Yeah, that's all I have, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I hope the tutorial was useful for you and a good time. Have a good one.